going on guys thanks for tuning in to check out another ship design tutorial this tutorial like all of the tutorials in this series are part of a set created for students studying in the ocean and naval architectural engineering discipline at memorial university of newfoundland's faculty of engineering and applied science in st john's newfoundland canada today's tutorial is intended to provide an example of tank and compartment formation in maxer we're going to look at basic techniques of hull modeling including creating prismatic and non-prismatic tanks and compartments generating non-buoyant volumes, and assigning tank fluids to tanks. The objective of today's lecture is to increase your understanding of how to use a popular CAD software to further develop a hull form using standard features in the MaxSurf utility. By the end of today's lecture, you should be able to identify essential MaxSurf commands used for creating prismatic and non-prismatic tanks, build and form tanks in a MaxSurf or other NURB surface imported design, and populate tanks with assorted marine fluids for further analysis. So let's begin by actually taking a look at how this is done in the program. I'll begin by opening the stability module of MaxSurf. And entering this module will permit us to complete modeling of tanks, non-buoyant volumes, defining compartments, and running various stability assessments. Since this is a new model, I'm not asking the software to recall any previous work I've done in stability, so I'll leave it at the default option, which is to calculate new sections. I'll leave the number of stations at a low setting for now, and we'll leave the calculation of surfaces at medium precision. Normally, I would take a plan view of my vessel and sketch out my proposed tank arrangement based on my experience and some research regarding how similar vessels have laid out their tank geometry. For example, here is a sketch of a tank geometry for a destroyer. I'm not going to get into the theory of general arrangements right now, as I've covered it in depth in one of the theory modules. Suffice to say, it's a dash of Archimedes, a pinch of Lewis and Lamb, a little Martha Stewart flair, and a ton of experiential theft. So instead, let's focus on how we actually build the tank arrangement in MaxSurf. I'll begin by placing some tanks. Click the Room Definition window. This brings up the Room Definition input window. Now by selecting File, New Room Definition, I can begin to create a series of tanks. Begin by defining the location of the tank's aft bulkhead. Then I'll enter the forward coordinate. Next, I can define the forward port coordinate and the forward starboard coordinate. Now, enter a coordinate for the forward top and forward bottom of the tank. If I scroll over, we can see that the corresponding aft coordinates are set to prismatic. This generates a rectangular prism tank. If I toggle on intact tank visibility, we can see the tank as it is currently defined. Remember that although we're defining port and starboard bulkheads, a port side bulkhead may be located on the starboard side of the vessel relative to the center line. Thus, if the center line of the ship is created at zero, absolute port defines negatively and absolute starboard uses positive coordinates. I'll switch viewpoints now to the perspective view and toggle on Render Transparent, and we'll see a centerline tank has been created. MaxSurf updates tank geometry in real time, permitting you to experiment, or more likely err, and make rapid corrections and iterations to your design. I'm going to go ahead and create a few more tanks, and then we'll discuss some particular features that are possible. Okay, now that I've created a number of tanks, we can observe how they fit in the hull form. Selecting each tank, the properties of the selected object appear in the Properties menu. You can make changes using this menu, but I'm going to stick with the Room Definition window for now. Let's rename some tanks so we can keep track of them. and then we'll toggle on the room visibility option and toggle off the render feature, and I can observe that the individual tank and compartment names are displayed. Now, I'm going to create a couple of compartments. Notice that I am inputting coordinates that extend beyond my hull's envelope. Later, I'll form the compartments using the hull as the trimming tool.
so I'll create a small compartment here that might be a pump room for my aviation fuel tank. Add a compartment, and then in the Compartment Type cell, open the drop-down and select Compartment. Now fill in your pertinent compartment details. And I'm just going to go ahead and create some additional machinery spaces here and we'll time lapse the footage so that we don't take up too much of the video. So we've covered a significant number of compartment modeling features here, but let's quickly introduce two more that you might want. First, we created buoyant volumes thus far, but what if you had a non-buoyant volume that eats up space in your compartment? For example, a sea chest or a bow thruster tunnel? This volume might easily be modeled using a non-buoyant volume. Under Type, select Non-Buoyant Volume, enter your details as before, and notice that MaxSurf automatically links a negative volume to the compartment from which it is deleting volume. Finally, let's wrap up the modeling features by creating a non-prismatic volume. Uh, actually, I don't really like that term since we're still creating a prism, just not a rectangular prism. In any event, I simply enter my desired coordinate shift into the prismatic cells, overwriting them, creating, in this case, a sloped trapezoidal tank. Last, I'm going to move up to the Analysis menu and select Density. This action brings up the Density pop-up dialog, which displays the pre-built library of common marine fluids MaxSurf employs. The code value is a short-form characterization you can use to assign fluid properties to your tanks. You can alter any fluid property directly in the cells, and there are also 20 cells available for adding other custom materials. To reset any changed values, press the default densities button. I'll populate the fluid type cells in my tank definitions. Now I've waited until the end to form my compartments, but there's no requirement for you to do so. You can form your compartments as you go along, and in fact, this may be a better idea as you can visualize how your modeling is progressing. Regardless, or irregardless, if you're inclined to use the word regardless of the fact it's non-standard and clunky, anytime you make a change to your layout or vessel loads, 
you can update and reform your load case and view by clicking the update button. All right, with the demonstration out of the way, let's review what we introduced today. I demonstrated a method of creating prismatic regular and irregular tanks, as well as forming compartments and other spaces using the hull as a constraining boundary. I also talked about creating and using non-point volumes within tanks and compartments. Finally, I introduced fluid properties assignment to tanks. At this point, with a little practice and experimentation on your own, you should quickly be able to develop the skill to create a tank arrangement for your hull model using data concerning your required tank volumes from your parametric analysis. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave them in the comments or email me directly. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. I'm continuing to develop new content daily, and you never know what might apply to you unless you're tuning in. Thanks for watching and take care.